Alright guys, uh, welcome back to uh, to our channel. Thank you so much. We have been getting a lot of feedback from each and every one of you. Thank you for the questions that you uh, sent to us. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about something quite interesting. We have three special guests, which Adam is going to introduce to you uh, later. But just to say a, a big thanks to each and every one of you for supporting us on this uh, podcast. Again, I am Diki from the Die Flop Podcast. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Adam. Today, we have three very enthusiastic and energetic boys. Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Die Vlogs where today we're going to be talking about IDC! Let's go, let's get it! Awesome! Oh yes. Those guys are so enthusiastic that I need to turn down the volume of their mic because they are just so energetic. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce them. Ah, yeah. <laughs> We have Lucian. Hey. We have Brandon. Yo, yo, yo. And of course, we have Hang. Hi. So, guys, uh, do you mind introduce yourself to the audience? So, hey, guys. My name is Lucian. I'm 26 and I come from France, like you can see at my accent. I started diving when I was like eight uh, because of my dad. And then, yeah, I'm currently a dive master and I'm uh, applying to be uh, an instructor now. Wait, wait, correction, he's an IDC candidate. Okay, get it right. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna be an instructor soon. He's Anyways, he's, going to, he's, go he's going to be an instructor. That's the reason of this podcast. Anyways, my name is Brandon. I'm 27 this year. I'm from Singapore, sunny Singapore, and I started diving when I was 14, 15. How did I get into it? It was basically a CCA. I was part of like the NCCC, which is like the Navy CCA. Yeah, so that's how I got into diving. And I'm currently idc candidate yes i'm a dive master but i'm gonna be an instructor soon hopefully in the next few days hey guys i'm hang yeah it's a chinese a local chinese and look at the color you already know this is a malaysian color and very healthy color okay <laughs> as the host talking about just now he have three uh, what what kind of the boys are very happy uh, heard about the words boy however i want to introduce our group here by cdi it's a clever boy instructor <laughs> all right hope we yeah. will be success in a few days later yeah uh, hey, how awesome, do you start awesome. scuba diving i start my scuba diving because it's one of my dreams since i was young so there you go you see it doesn't matter at what age you are people of eight years old nine years old 10 years old 44 years old in my uh, last uh, experience when I was an instructor, I even taught a 72-year-old doctor to be certified as a scuba diver. Nice. But then again, yes, you need to have uh, good medical clearance, I mean, medical background, so you will uh, sign in the uh, medical form. will ensure that your fitness level, your health level is good to go for diving. So there you go, CBI. Come on, <laughs> so prior to this podcast, uh, these boys over here, including Dicky, they have been going through this uh, instructor development course for the past eight to nine days, I believe. Ten days. Ten days. Ten, ten days, ten, ten days. So uh, they are now awaiting to do their instructor examination. Examination. Examination, which is coming tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Very well, sweet. all the best to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So uh, my first question is to Heng. Yes. What is your inspiration and motivation to become a scuba instructor? Okay, since I have diving, then I found out that that's a very good dream for me. The more you dive, the more you will wish to explore. So this is one of the steps of how to advance yourself also. Yeah, this is also one of my life goals to become a dive pro. Yep, this is one of my life challenge, my self challenge. As I said, yeah, this kind of the old, you make your change through your life, yeah. So previously, you were in a different industry altogether. Actually, I'm, I've been, yeah, totally different. Yeah, all the jobs is dry on the land. I've been at a uh, while for, as a police guy, but just uh, entry level. What makes you choose scuba diving as your next career instead of something else? Why scuba diving? Why scuba diving? Because scuba diving be become as my hobby, one of my hobby. So that's that's a good example of someone who have been working multiple jobs, and eventually it's it was a decision for career change, and he chose 
his hobby, hobby as yes, his you know. um, career. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, we have a lot of young CEOs, young executives, you know, people who are really doing well and then they keep, they, they come into scuba diving simply because that gives them a lot of fulfillment. You know, be, be, be it time, be it where you are in nature and kind of close to nature and, you know, our office is just right there in front of the beach. All right, so that's for Hang. And uh, what about you guys? Brendan, uh, Lucian, would you mind sharing what was what inspired you and motivated you in becoming a scuba instructor? I think for me, uh, at the start of when I was taking my dive master, right? At the start, my mentality was, oh, you know, I can travel, I get to dive, get to assist. But what really made me take that next step to being an instructor was uh, having my role models in build that or rather ignite that curiosity in me and that led to you know that fulfillment and and that passion being passed down or that knowledge being passed down and i thought to myself i really want to like have my own students or or nurture my own divers and pass that same passion or that same curiosity to others mm. so that i think that for me was a driving factor so basically yeah. there was a an individual who inspired you Yes, so you, think, you, who was this individual? I think it's not uh, just one individual but multiple individuals. Okay. It's not necessarily diving related. You know, uh, a simple role model could be my mom. All you right. Know, she, you know, I come from a background of finance. That's right. first of all. So, you know, leaving finance and going to diving, you know, I mean, there's a lot of fun in what we do in uh-huh. terms of diving, but in terms of, I definitely earn more in doing a corporate job. That, yes. That's for sure, right? Okay. But what my mom's take was on it was, you know, if you love what you do, you you never work you a never day in your life. Exactly. Day again, yeah. Right. And she she always told me, you know, you know, you don't worry about money too much because if you love what you do, naturally you work hard for it. Right. Because you want it. You had yes. that you have that that drive that oh you you want something really badly. Right. Yes. So you will, eventually you'll reach a level where money will flow in. So as yeah. long as you believe in what you do and that that kind of motivated me to, you know, awesome. make that career, make that change. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Lucian. Yeah. For me, I didn't even plan to, to become a recreative uh, professional diver. But uh, as a uh, Brandon, I was a diver in the Navy also, but in mm. France. After that, I quit to join university. And after university, during university, I had to do an internship. Mm-hmm. So I chose to do it in, uh, in Malaysia last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And then Ben told me that I could uh, join the um, dive master course. All right. So I joined, and then I re- I was. It was the moment I was the most more most happy in my life. Okay. The happiest moment of my life. So doing the dive master, uh, being out there in the sea, exactly. was the happiest was the, moment of yeah, your life. All right. That three months was definitely the, the happiest of my life. So after finished my study, when I just finished my study, I, I was like. I need to go back to Malaysia. I okay. need to go back there. <laughs> I cannot, it's not Malaysia possible welcomes to, you yeah. all, all the time. Thank you so much. Our doors are always open. I'm feeling at home here, so I all will right. never quit, I think. So far. Yeah. yeah. No, my yeah. first. My first yeah, one. His first home yeah. now. His first home now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I will go back in France only for Christmas. Otherwise, my, my mother will kill me. <laughs> okay. All right. So from being French army, is it French Legion or French? No, no. Uh, French army. French army. It's the army. navy, yeah. And then now into diving, scuba diving, exactly. recreational diving as a career. And uh, tomorrow, you guys go for the IE, doing it for two days. Eventually, you become uh, an instructor. So um, before we proceed on to the second question, I would really want to express my uh, gratitude and thanks to the three of you for giving the trust in me uh, to help and guide you towards becoming the next generation of a uh, scuba instructor, right? As you guys can see, all three of them actually have different reasons, different reasons. to become a dive professional. Mm-hmm. Aheng is because he wants a career change. Brandon would like to nurture and become a teacher mm-hmm. for the next generation. Mm-hmm. And Lucian... Wow, really unexpected. It's yeah. just because he loved diving yeah. the best three months of his life. Basically, the lifestyle. Being here three months changed the projection of his life. Yes. Magic, yes. Yeah. yes the true. magic. So now we know what makes you, what, what inspired you to become 
a, a dive professional. So, Lucian, for you, what preparations did you make prior to coming for this uh, IDC course? So yes, uh, yes. First, um, I was in France working in a factory, making a little bit of money, saving money, uh, before to come in uh, in Asia. And then uh, the cheapest plane was uh, Paris to Bangkok. So I went to Bangkok and spent a few days there before to come in uh, in KL and after in Tioman. My preparation in Tioman was resting from Bangkok, and then do my e-learning because it's a big, big uh, thing to do. Like it's a 16 chapter. Yeah, yeah. Long, it's a, it's a long, massive yeah, work. Long. So yeah, so I was working from on my e-learning and then just make a checkup of my equipment. And it was a good idea because my BCD was full of corrosion. <laughs> <laughs> it's been kept in France yeah. for too long. <laughs> he wants to come back to Asia. Exactly. Well. <laughs> it was leaking from everywhere. So yeah, just take care of my equipment. And then, yeah, that's it for me. Resting, e-learning and checking the equipment. How long was your last dive? Oh, it was in Tioman, actually. Yeah, yeah. So how long July, was it? July, it's like maybe for seven months. So I was concerned also about this. Uh, that's why I guiding a little bit uh, before to join. So even prior to coming here to Tioman to do your IDC, I mean, there are so a lot of steps that you need to take to get to this level where you can become a candidate. So you have to do your dive master. Exactly. You have to do guiding. You have to gain experience yeah. before becoming an instructor. What about you, Brandon? Preparations? Yes. I've been a dive master for about two years-ish. So I was diving in Bali and then, and then ADEX, I met, I met Jen at ADEX. Funny enough, um, my course director at the time knows Ben as well. So that's how I got this gig. That's how I came to Tiong, where I met this guy. This guy was a DMT. He was doing his dive master training. Yeah. And he was uh, anchoring for me during guides. So preparations in terms of the course requirements, it's, yeah, you got to have some experience. Uh, there is a minimum number of log dives you need as well. So you got to be a dive master to be an IDC candidate. But in terms of preparation for this IDC for the course, uh, I actually just got a new job. So I was, I'm working in Sea Aquarium Singapore. So I'm a dive specialist there where we, uh, we do a lot of diving basically. But, um, but yeah, I just got that new job and then, you know, before I got the job during the interview, I had to tell them, you know, I have an IDC booked, you mm -hmm. know, so, so they had to let me go. And then I was working for two weeks and then I came to the island. You know, it was an interesting experience for me because there's so much e-learning to do, right? Yeah, yeah there's so much e-learning to do. So, and, and I work like, is it eight hours or nine hour shifts? So, and we start really early. So I go to work at 7.30. I'm at work at 7.30. So I get up about five and I'm in the water diving at 8 a.m. The next time I have free time, 6 p.m. onwards, right? And that's where I do all my studying. Your, your studies, and yeah. then I still need to sleep for the next day. So that was like a, it was, it was a very good learning experience. So how long was that management. preparation? How long does it take for you to, you know, to, to finish your e-learning? So it depends on the pace. Because you're working. Yeah, or? it depends on the pace uh, of how you learn and how early you start. That's the key thing. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, it took two weeks. So okay. every day I'll just read a little bit and then next chapter, attempt read, questions, yeah, attempt questions read questions and do the knowledge questions. reviews okay. and things like that. So that took like two weeks. And then I finished my e-learning like the night before I came to Tioman. Okay. So like the next day was IDC already. So I was, you know, just make sure that I have that out of the way before I start the course. Mm. What about yeah. you, Aheng? For me, preparation just, yeah. Most part, I, 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 I give the effort in is the mental ready. Okay, yeah. mental readiness. Yeah. Yes. All right. As you know, you want to become a life pro, you need to be knowledgeable. So definitely there will be a lot of the homework or the, or the learning you're going to do catch up. So before that, we start our e-learning by our own pace. Yeah. So I spend more than, I think, more than one week, a whole day. I tell you what, I wake up at 7 in the morning and then 7.30, I start my study. Such yeah. of a self-challenge uh, also, I chose language is not in my mother tongue to start my study. Okay. So I will really be ready for that. So I spend more time on that. So I spend almost the whole day, then this continuously. 10 days like that one in between that yeah it's a uh, chinese new year so i have two to three day breaks so it's so almost a uh, seven eight days a full whole day to do knowledge catch up and then after that yeah actually i plan to make this step up since uh last season i mean last year but and last year i still as a dive master i have the guiding job 
And then I found that I'm not ready yet because my mind cannot be peaceful down and I can't catch up the knowledge. So I delay my plan and come to join uh, dispatch of the IDC. Right. So, uh, you, so, so you took a week break from work to do your studies and it was a full day of study for seven days to get yourself prepared to complete all the uh, theory, knowledge reviews, yeah. all that kind of stuff, the e-learning yes. stuff, right? Yes. Your self-study. And then um, just to just to bring yourself yes. into the IDC mode. Bring yourself okay. in New York as a candidate mode. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have one question for three of you. You guys did mention a lot about e-learning and also knowledge theories. Do you guys uh, do any preparations in terms of dive skills? Do you guys go into the water to practice your skills and uh, everything that is involved underwater? Because uh, you guys have only been talking about studying yeah. books and everything. What about like physical skills? I think if you are working as a dive master, you will practice most of those skills every day. Things, mm. Simple things like controlling your buoyancy becomes second nature. When it comes to demonstrating to a student, you know, it has to be clear, it has to be precise, it has to be exaggerated, it has to be slow. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you know, you have to exaggerate each and every movement of the skill so that the student can understand what you're trying to trying to demonstrate, right? So in terms of that, I did not do a lot of practice. Even though I was diving every day before I came, I was diving every day, but I wasn't necessarily practicing those specific skills because I had a job to do, right? But because you're but, confident yeah, you, but because, you're diving it every yeah, day. Yeah, because right? you, you know, I'm diving every day. So those skills is more of just muscle memory when you do those 24 skills and it just comes back to you like a flood. Because mm. when you do your dive master training, you're going to be drilled and instilled in those 24, 25 skills. So you're yep. saying getting 25, a yeah. good... 24, yeah. Getting a good dive master course is essential in yes, becoming... I, yes, the foundation of knowledge and skills that you need, the better your dive master training is, the easier IDC will be. That's mm. for sure. And then I think that's... Uh, also the reason why a lot of fresh dive masters like they go to IDC right after because they want it fresh and all the knowledge in terms of theory and skills are over there you know mm. instead of a dive master like for example me even though I dive every day but I'm not practicing that kind of knowledge every day I'm not practicing that kind of skills every day mm. so it's not as fresh you okay yeah uh, this probably applies same thing as well because he has been guiding for the whole season last yes, year. Yes, So definitely. You, both of you has probably been clocking a lot, a lot of dice prior to coming to IDC. And yeah, basically, th those skills is already like our second nature. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but Lucian here has been not diving for seven, seven months. months. Seven months, yeah. So how do you feel getting back into the water doing your IDC after that long period of time? Mm not going into the water. Yeah, that's why I asked to uh, the BNJ Dive Center to guide a little bit, to mm -hmm. go back in the boat and, and yeah, dive again. And also with Hang, we was uh, training uh, in the water, in the shore, just, uh, just in front of the dive shop. And uh, we have a, a lot of, lot of uh, skill to redo because it practice, wasn't, yeah, practice. we need, we, need, yeah. <laughs> we had practice a lot. So yeah, just to make us confident enough and join the, join the IDC. Wow, Dicky, <laughs> Your candidates are well prepared coming into this. Yeah, uh, they, they, they are hardworking. So I, I give that to them. I'm blessed uh, that, you know, this team, the CBI yeah, team, CBI. Uh, they're really serious about the IDC itself. They, they know what they want. They know what it takes to get there and they put the hard work in it. This is what, this, these are the qualities that we want to see in our candidates as well. And uh, being an instructor is not easy. Being, being an instructor, you need to really show good role model. So how would you show good role model if you would not want to build yourself in these models, right? So these are the attributes that these guys have. And um, I wish them all the very best. I know that they can do better. But yeah, they are, they are, yeah, they are, they are solid. You. They're solid, yes. Well, since that IDC is already completed, Mm. Right, I'm sure that uh, coming into IDC course, you will probably have your own requirement of your candidates. On the first day that you met them, on the first day that you started the class, mm. do they meet your expectation in terms of preparation, or is there anything that you should? I mean, is oh, there any? Is. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Is there is there anything that they can actually do better coming into the? 
Well, I just recently became a course director, right? But prior to that, I've, I've done quite a lot of uh, IDCs. I staffed the IDC and I led the IDC as well. So uh, in those experience since 2018, 2019, I've seen a lot of candidates. And when they come in, they are from unprepared to moderately prepared to having great interest to not even having interest to putting a lot of effort to think that they come and they can just get a certification <laughs> that's that's yeah you know, so I, I i've seen it all but i'm i'm really glad and i'm i'm really happy with uh, these guys here because not only they meet the my expectation what my i don't have really high expectations all i want from my candidate is that when they come in they're serious they want to learn and they're focused no matter how good or how bad their preparation is as long as they have these three and it will make things easier for me to give them what they need to go and be prepared at the uh, examination i've got no problems with them they they meet the expectation they are good with their skills they're good with their knowledge yeah everybody has these little things that you know i mean for me as well i have my shortcomings right so each and every one of us need time and need opportunity to improve ourselves they're not slacking so they're really really prepared to come they put effort uh, there are theories there all i need to do is you know just to make sure that they are able to read the question correctly and then remind them of what they have learned the knowledge that is in there I mean, seven months ago two years ago to come out and to just be at the fingertips that kind of stuff so to, to answer your questions I'm blessed because most most of my candidates come in they know how serious it is and they are prepared for it as well yeah only the little few that are really <laughs> we want some names. challenging yeah, we need some challenging. spill the bucket yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> spill so, the beans these well, ones here not so challenging they're okay they were good i've had worst so so dicky since your candidates here they, I think themselves are interested to know what is their strong and their flaws, right? Maybe we should talk about that uh, for sure. later. For sure. Yeah. Later. later. Maybe. Not, uh, we're yes. going to talk now. about it later. Now, now not now. Are you going to put it in the podcast? Of course I'm okay. going to put course, it in the podcast. Of course, man. <laughs> this topic actually translates to our next question, mm. which is uh, the IDC itself. So, Brandon, please tell us, share with us your IDC experience uh, with Dickie. I think in general, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment, especially if you, you know, not only want to pass the IE, but you know, the foundations of being a good instructor. So I think one very important thing that, you know, when Hing said about preparation is, yeah, mental readiness, your mental prep. And of course, you know, on just day one with Dickie, you know, today you're going to start thinking like an instructor, <laughs> you know, yeah, you got to start thinking like an instructor. So, so I think mental, pre- you know, you got to be prepared. You got to want it badly. You, you want, you have to want it enough. Then you put that work in, mm. you know, and it's a, it's a lot of hard work, long hours, and long days sometimes, but um, very fulfilling. Mm. Cause I feel as, as though, you know, when I was a dive master and I was assisting in courses, let's say open water or whatever course, and you're assisting, your main job as a dive master, you're there to, I don't want to say look pretty, la, but you know, <laughs> but like, of course you, of course you have some responsibilities, right? You look after the students and then, you know, the instructor tells you to do something, you do something or demonstrate something or whatever, mm-hmm. but everything else about the course is eluded to you. You don't know how it's structured. You don't know what's coming next. Even you're asking yourself, so what are we doing next? You know, how is the instructor, what is the perception of the instructor? How is he conducting the course or how is he uh, structuring this? What's he going to do next and his mentality and his approach to it i think that for me was so interesting mm. because i've always been in the back seat and i've always been curious right and then suddenly you come to idc and then you learn all these things and then suddenly you're like whoa oh so this is how it's done mm. or, this is how it should be done should be done yeah. so there's ways to get it done <laughs> and there's ways that it should be done so so i think overall it's a very fulfilling experience for me a lot of hard work but very fulfilling and i think these memories or you know what i've done in the last 10 days i always remember i always recall you know that oh this day i had to do this and, you know something wasn't working out but we have to solve it or you know all these different challenges and it was very um rewarding mm. i feel yeah 
a lot of hard work, but it's it's worth it. If you really want it, it's worth it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can you give us like a uh, a summary of how the days are like, like from the morning all the way to you finish the day? How 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 is it structured? Okay. So first in the morning, usually it's dry, and then you are doing some theoric theoretical stuff and thing like this. Maybe do some exam or thing like this. And then uh, we can go on the, in the swimming pool, uh, do a um, confined water presentation or uh, in the open water. That's pretty it. And after half hours, we was always in the classroom uh, doing some theoretical presentation or all those kind of stuff. He made it sound really easy. I, 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 think, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I think Luke's too chill. <laughs> no, like our, our days are long days. We, we start early. Yes. And even some days, you know, we we ha- always have late nights. We are always in the classroom late and after hours, you know, doing theory or or learning something else. And and our schedule is never fixed, mm. right? If there's one thing I've learned in the last ten days, is our schedule is never fixed. Things can change immediately, you know. Mm. And it's not just what you're learning today, but we need to prepare for presentations and and teaching presentations and our water skills for the next day. Mm. On top of preparing that, we still have to you know continue doing our dive theory and things like yes, that yeah, so, so a lot of, it's, it's nine to nine sometimes nine to ten there i, were, I think there the ones were nine to two huh? the yeah. first the first, the first, day, first day or the first, first second day, day three days we were like a.m. yeah huh. we we're like nine eight thirty or nine eight thirty no, no, was it nine a.m yeah. yeah okay yeah nine a.m yeah nine a.m until one in the morning i remember after day three dicky said Dicky wrote on the, on the whiteboard, right? We have a curfew, you know, be in bed by 12 because we have to be well rested <laughs> for the next day that's coming because the next day is going to be a heavy day also, right? Yeah. For me, I really just feel enjoy during you enjoy the IDC. The course, okay. I enjoy it very, very well. It's not like what I imagined before I come to attend the IDC because uh, since uh, you know I'm working here the last season when I, I've looked a few batch. Uh, they're going conducting the IDC. Then every candidate, yeah, when they come up from the classroom, it's just very sour stress. face. Yeah, sour Stressful. face. But I think maybe CBI is good. <laughs> so we always come up with hi, yeah. <laughs> yes, finish. Uh, yes, but, uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hang. It's you okay. Yeah, I'm very lucky. I meet a very good, uh, I mean, uh, cosmate. Yeah, teammate. Teammate, yeah. and I have a very good uh, course director. Before I come to IDC, I feel more stressed than now. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. The IDC very fun and then piss me down. Okay. I think also it's because, you know, three of us worked together last yes. season and we know each yes. other. And, you know, when I yes. when I heard that, so first I heard Luke was becoming a candidate. I was like, oh, damn, I got Luke on my team, you know. I got mm. someone to depend on. I know someone's reliable. And then this guy... I finally heard that he's coming as well. I was like, well, finally, he's going to become an instructor. And I was so excited. And, right. and then when I came and I found out there's no other candidates, there's only three of us, I was like, that's the best. Because uh-huh. we all three know each other. We already have that chemistry. Uh-huh. And we you know in terms of learning, right, we just bounce ideas yes. off one another. And, it's more you know, on sharing. And more it's not just, yeah, and it's not just, uh, just on theory, but actual application because we have, experience diving right yes. we have experience working with students and fun divers and things like that so you know we always ask dicky you know how would this apply to if i'm in this situation or in that situation and he never mm. fails to answer us mm. which is which is kind of hectic because we have thousand and one questions <laughs> yeah we have so many questions and our questions are not you know we're, we're, we're not asking entry level <laughs> questions here we're asking questions in in the in the perception of you know, professional of a dive professional and yeah. what we what would you actually do in this situation yeah there's a lot of fun adam asked me what was my uh expectations uh towards the candidate who come in right and for you guys as well as a candidate who are embarking and becoming a, a, a an instructor obviously you have some expectations in your mind i um, mean towards the instructor towards the course director who's going to be nurturing you who's going to be guiding you who's going to be getting you to where you want to be. So if you can share, what are your expectations towards your course director and towards the course itself? And if that has been met, exceed or you know, underperform? Okay, so for me, my expectation was um, that my course director will be like... Wait, 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 I got it. Got it? it? No, no, the... Yeah? 
he started translating. Oh, yeah. Way. I translate <laughs> in my head, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I lost again. <laughs> 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 this is what this is yeah. what then is yeah. so yeah. I see exactly my mind day. blow <laughs> so yeah I was expecting for you that you will be patient with me because okay. seven months without any dive so yeah and definitely you're the best course director that I could have oh wow so yeah very full of knowledge if you have if you guys have one question di diving question 100% sure that he will have the answer so yeah uh, he's patient also <laughs> very very patient and uh, yeah for me yeah for me it's a it's a really good thing that you are my course in the yeah for all of us it's a very good thing that you you was our course director okay hey okay. i'm glad, I'm glad I, to I, hear. I i think well mr kados over here you guys don't know his <laughs> thing name his name is mr kados but uh you know i was working in bali and yeah i've been diving relatively long time mm. so i've met multiple cds this plan for me when i wanted to be instructor this was 2019 so mm. that was years ago already you know mm. five years ago and because of covid i couldn't do it right so in that sense i was observing a uh, course director and standards and i'm very particular of where i want to do my idc because i know that the course director impacts everything else because mm. he's going to teach you you know from ground up he's going to train you to be instructor from ground up and I've already witnessed how um, Dicky conducts his IDC from uh, the last batch with Aiden and Vanga mm -hmm. and you know, and and the rest of the guys. So, so I wasn't worried about standards, you know. And to me, he far exceeded expectations. I mean, he's available twenty four seven. He can't. Okay, so so background <laughs> background story, right? We are both staying in the dorm together. So I sleep on the top bunk and Dicky sleeps below. And I kid you not, this guy cannot sleep because he's thinking about what he's gonna teach more. He's thinking about how we're gonna do. He's gonna, he's thinking about everything and every night he can't sleep. You know, so so you know it just shows he he has a lot of commitment and not only he is available twenty four seven. We got an after hours room. It's <laughs> after hours yeah. room. It's available and also he's very knowledgeable. He has a lot of experience. Yeah, a lot of experience. So if if you ask him a question, he doesn't know it. Bet you he'll find you the right mm. answer. He'll find a way to give you an answer. You know. Mm. So and and that speak speaks loads to his attitude and and the way he conducts himself and conducts the IDC. So so for me, I was very pleased. Especially you know he kept it very light. So even though we still have that stress, you know, when we're doing papers or doing something, we still have that stress. But he kept it very light, you know, relax. If you're if you're not relaxed, you can't learn. So, so in that in that sense, I'm very appreciative and grateful that we have Diki as our CD, which is oh, I, yeah, fantastic. I'm humbled by that. Humbled. <laughs> Yeah, five star, five star, <laughs> five, five star, star, five star, star. Ten, five star. So, you so you know, it, even, oh, though he's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even though he's, even though he he recently got his CD, but he's not new to the industry. Yeah. That's no, that's yeah. very important. He's not new to staffing. He's not new to teaching. He's been you know teaching for more than ten years already. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely the experience is there. And when you take your dive master in the future, and you. And once you do your dive master, your first pro level of training, then you observe how certain certain instructors behave, and then mm. of course the next level, right, yeah. which is CDs. Yeah. For me, I would just feel very thankful to Dicky for your you. patience you. and for all your guiding. He's very very patient, and then he let me know how I prepare for myself and where am I. And not only for me, I think everybody yeah, yeah get yeah, it for from sure. Dicky. I don't know how to say just by thank you <laughs> just thank you <laughs> and thank you back yeah. to you guys yeah he's knowledgeable and no matter in which firm and i know that it is very involved in this diving is for long and a very lot of the field especially and give us a lot of the guy and make our more in, interested in diving yeah. as well yeah mm. so uh brandon did mention aiden Dicky actually mentored Aiden in his IDC as well. Yes, yes. So I want to get Aiden since, to come in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Since oh, Aiden, since, since, let's, since let's go. Yeah. Since this is sour. <laughs> Have guys. So since Aiden is here Hello and Dicky actually did mentor him, we could probably ask him the same question, right? So what is your experience in IDC uh, with Dicky? Oh, so my IDC was totally different because these guys were not here. <laughs> so my IDC was with completely different people. So it was with Venga. I have never met Venga before. I was supposed to, but... Uh, 
Yeah, we're getting it a little bit. It would, be, it would have been very fun with these three guys over here, but mine was actually also quite fulfilling. Uh, but I had a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure from my un- from my uncle, especially because my uncle is the CD of this of this type center B and J, and also because my dad is has been an instructor for about what thirty five years now. So really, really put a lot of stress on myself to meet the expectations. Most of my IC I was quite stressful actually. It's quite stressed. <laughs> I think the stress has come from. Me. Yes, I put my I put the stress on myself actually more than rather the IDC itself was stressful. Diki was uh, the course director for most of my course because uh, after my uh, my IDC he went straight away for the CDTC. Okay, moving forward, so more about your experience with in uh, in IDC. What how is it like to be in a classroom with Diki? But is it interactive or is just him standing in front telling you guys what to do? I have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> good to know, good to hear. Uh, I, yeah. you, you need to find out the answer by your own. Come, come do TK. <laughs> come and experience. Yeah, come and experience yourself, right? it. Yeah, but, but actually, you know, I love the dynamic of this team, you know. Classroom sessions don't feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like lectures. Yeah. That's why, you know, when I was in uni, you know, everyone was like, Falling asleep yeah, or yeah. or just not paying attention and just find the class boring. But you know, Dicky he's a he's a storyteller, man. <laughs> he's a storyteller. And then that's also the reason why our schedule changes sometimes because we take too long. But we always go back and forth and share experiences and yeah. and, and yeah. you know gives an insight on the application of the value of what we're learning, which mm. is which is great. And then it's, everything is light because we're always joking like that. You know, we may be stressed, right? But every day is like this. Every day, we, you know, we're even laughing about mistakes. You know, how could I do something so yeah. so stupid? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, classroom sessions were, were good, interactive. We bounce off each other back and forth and share stories. And of course... Um, we play of, a little bit, yeah, play games, yeah, you and know. Then, yeah. then, uh, I really like that, you know, Dicky puts himself in our shoes. We see each other every day and we always have this dynamic. So the moment one of us is like quieter or, you know, he immediately knows what something's up. You know, you get enough sleep or, or why, why are you not paying attention? You're distracted or something, you know. So, so that's, he put himself <laughs> in our shoes and knows, you know, if we are tired or if we are exhausted or if we really need a toilet break or, yeah. you know, yeah. and we yeah. start to, because our, our energy level is always here <laughs> for yeah. the entire classroom session. Yeah. And then the moment, they, they, the moment it, yeah, the moment it goes <laughs> here, we all need a break already. Yeah, we need to bring <laughs> yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So five minute break. You know, like, not like in uh, school, you uh, when go into the classroom, uh, look at the time, oh, and when we could start, when, when we stop, yeah. Mm. Mm. I hear I, I really enjoy the IDC and mm. all the time we spend with you guys yeah during the daytime or and after the class also we have some activities together as well some group studying yeah. together and even uh Dicky already signed off of the day he yeah. also calmed down and <laughs> yeah. guide us as well yeah thank you <laughs> yeah we'll be you know starting here and and you know he's already off he's done teaching for the day you know and then after dinner you see him come down with his phone he's yeah. ready for a bit but he's just sitting there waiting for someone to ask him something <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly yeah but you know i don't know about you guys but i feel like Time flew, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Time flies yes, yes, yes. So, fast. so fast. Yeah. Like, because I think we're having too much fun or we're too stressed. Or <laughs> yeah. But every time we're in the classroom, you know, we start early and then, you know, in the blink of an eye, right, it's five o'clock, we already had lunch and, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, just time flies, man. And, yeah. and then blink of two eyes, IE IDC, is tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. IDC is over, man. Yeah. I just yeah. feel like it's crazy. Yeah, I felt like we just started yeah. yesterday. You know, feel still yeah. feel like babies, but but you know, he has confidence in us, and we're gonna ace it tomorrow. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna ace it. Speaking of, we still have uh, Brennan owe me one, <laughs> and okay, so, Lucian so, owe so, me two. So let me share a story of why I owe him one, right? Because we went on a swim, four hundred meter swim, uh, which is basically a clean fatigue swim just with your mask, you know, and then we got to do four hundred meters, which is a distance from our jetty yeah. to the dive center, yeah. right? And funny enough, I wore my slippers to the jetty. <laughs> <laughs> and I only realized it halfway. So, you know, at the jetty, I was like, oh, Dickie, I got my slippers. You know, why am I, <laughs> uh, how am I going to, he was like, you know, just put it in your pants. No, I'm joking. Just pass it to me. <laughs> so he had to put it in his shorts and then he swam with it all the way. So I, I could swim properly without having to worry about. So I, have, I owe him one. So basically it means I have to have full marks for 
any component of, of, the, IE. of the IE, be it uh, theory or skills or presentation or whatever it is. I just have to, I have to give him one. I have to give him one full mark and... Uh, Liu should owes two, so he should be more worried. But so one, he's gonna. The Liu, one is, yeah. is one full mark. It's not one mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, one full, full mark, not one mark. Yeah. So Lucian's oh, gonna. I guess that opportunity to get one mark. So it's, not, <laughs> it's always always like this. So Lucian, what is your story? Yeah, Lucian's gonna share his story. So, so it's a good one. Basic, it's a good one. <laughs> so my story is more basic. Actually, I didn't wake up two times. <laughs> 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 and then. There is some sun in my room. Someone knock at the door. Lucian, it's me at the door <laughs> trying to wake him up. You have to because. And uh, when Dicky told me that I own him one the first time and two the second, I thought it was talking about beer. So, <laughs> so it's okay for me beer. I can buy. It's only ten ringgits. It's okay. But no, it's it's a full mark. So yeah, so I need to work a little bit more and then I will. I will give you back your two, uh, yes. your two full yeah, marks. Yeah. I think he needs to elaborate more on the story of why he was late in the first place <laughs> on the first time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, things, actually, okay. things, <laughs> no, actually, actually on the there first... There are things that are oh, no. private and confidential, <laughs> right, Lucian? Not talking about that, but no, on the first time, it was the late night, remember? Mm. We, were, we were in the classroom until like 2 a.m. Mm. And, you know, I was done. Hing was done. And this guy was like, I still need to do a few more. <laughs> and then he brought his laptop. <laughs> he brought his, yeah. the first night is your, yeah. you are the, you are the latest. No, 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 no that's no, later no, on. No, no, no. no. So yeah. he brought his laptop back home and he was doing work at his desk and he fell asleep at his desk. Mm. Yeah, that's how much work you got to put in. You know, that's how much, that's, that's the kind of commitment yeah. you need, you know, to be a good instructor, not just to pass the IE, but to be a yes. good instructor. So yes. he fell asleep at his desk. <laughs> <laughs> and he forgot to set his alarm and then the second one is on him because he completely just forgot. <laughs> oh shit, there is IDC. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta wake up to the discuss <laughs> today. I thought we we're done. <laughs> and I thought we were having fun. Yeah, he was, no. he was having IDC a... IDC going on. This is what we feel. We, we, are not, we are not joining any courses. Yeah, we're feeling that... Yeah, just the time flow. So, Dickie did a very well thing is he always don't stress us out. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the application of good judgment and being creative. There, exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, you know, Luke, that night, I'm pretty sure he was already dreaming. I'm already an instructor, you know, I don't need to wake up tomorrow. <laughs> Can wake but think about your course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Lucian, what about Dicky and you guys in the water or on the surface? How is it liked? Okay, so, so Dicky. Yeah, it was <laughs> very fun, but also. In the beginning, for me at least, a uh, little bit stressful. And Dicky, he came to me and just tell, told me that it's okay, chill, just be focused. And, and then, and then, and then we became too then, chill. <laughs> and then <laughs> I was too chill. So he went back to me, <laughs> told me, you owe me two. "Okay, you only <laughs> <laughs> you need you need to be yeah. focused. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna redo it, but you need to be focused." And then after that, what happened? I was too I, chill I, at I the moment. Share, yeah, share what yeah happened, please, everything, yeah. Like, everything. <laughs> it's all in here. <laughs> so what happened between Lucian and Dicky? So basically, you know, he was very confident in his water skills. You know, presenting, he didn't have an issue. He he knew what he was doing, and that was. I think it was the, our first or second day doing water skills. Yeah. So from that, on the first or second day, he was like, oh, you know, I got to be on point and all that. And then once he realized that. He's, it, he was meeting yeah, this point yeah, yeah, and he was he, confident he, he, he about it. He realized that. like, you know, I'm confident and, and I know what I'm doing. And then, you know, the next day he came and he just scored a one on everything. And then he was <laughs> like, what? He was a five yesterday. What's going on? So, you know, that was, uh, that was morning. It was morning, you know, yeah. morning training. And then. We had a break for lunch and, and then Lucian, you know, you know, when you come back, bring your A game. And then Lucian, I spoke to Lucian, I was like, you got to turn it up. You know, you got to, you got to get back to that level. You know, you got to wake up a bit. And then the moment after lunch, you went back into the water and he scored a five for everything else serious, again. Serious you know, he went into serious again. mode, you know, yeah. you know he, he switched off his instructor mode for a good <laughs> session and then he switched it back on. <laughs> yeah, so we had a lot of fun. You know, we, we know how to where and when to be serious, where and when to have fun, where and where to be playful. Yes, yeah. Well, that is life. Being an instructor, you cannot just be one track minded, right? Cannot be just, it's either you are too strict or too, uh, what's it called? Uh, regimental. You're not going to be a good instructor, right? Uh, the students are not going to have fun. The students are going to be stressful. They come to you to learn and to to enjoy and to experience what the nature uh, brings. 
But if you are killing that in the course, then yeah, you can say that it's detrimental to the to the students. So I think that that that's one thing you really instilled in us. Mm. I mean, even the way he conduct his classes, right? Everything is relaxed, so it's it's a very comfortable learning environment. But there are standards to be met, right? And that's and that's something that you you can't bend, mm. right? You can't bend those standards. So mm. so keep it light, keep it fresh, keep it comfortable. Everyone's learning at a good pace, but the standards always have to be there. Mm. That's one thing that's very important that he kind of passed down to us. Passed down. Yeah. <laughs> Aiden, I have a question for you. Aiden. Being a certified instructor for probably about a year already, does the things that you learn in IDC actually <coughs> translate in becoming a Kuba instructor? What you learn in your IDC, is it useful to Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, for sure, for sure. Because the way you teach, the way you present um, your skills and the way you conduct your classes are all exactly the same as how I learned in IDC. The standard of teaching, the level of the, the way I want to teach is the way I learned it from my course director. So I, whatever courses I teach, I also um, portray the same level of um, excellency. With regards to developing teaching techniques teaching philosophy it has to be put in you need to be nurtured in that way in order to also follow like what brandon said pass down everyone can just read the manual everyone just can just go and do the theory from e-learning and watch videos but you come here not only to brush up on your knowledge and your theories but also to be guided if not taught on how to teach other people. Yes. So I think that is that is the most important thing that you are at the IDC for. Correct. You know, yes. becoming a really good and competent instructor. It's not just by reading and watching videos now. So now let's switch our focus as director. Oh we did we're all ears, Dickie. <laughs> we're all ears. At the beginning of the podcast, right? We did promise that uh Dickie's gonna talk about you guys. Right, okay. Take it away. So I will, I will start with Aiden first because since Aiden is here and I did his wow. first in August last year, right? I knew Aiden since he was a little boy. So I'm close to the family, his mom, his father and his uncle. They are the owners of the uh, business, right? And see him growing up, doing all these diving courses and putting interest in the industry really, you know, brings joy to me. And back then I figured, oh, okay, at some point, this boy is going to follow his family's footstep you know, and becoming a really good instructor. Little did I know that I was the one who is responsible <laughs> 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 to make him... That legacy. <laughs> yes. that legacy. Yeah. So there was a lot of pressure, you know, because his uncle was my course director, was my mentor. His father was my instructor, my master instructor, as well as my uh, mentor. I need to guide, I need to teach. I, I wouldn't call it teach. Like I, need, I need to develop this kid who has got really good example up there. Does he really need to come to me? You know, that kind of thing. So I, it was really stressful for me. But uh, <laughs> that was also part of the reason why our course was so much stress. Sir. Stress. Yeah, yeah more stress. Because uh, he has his own set of stress. I got my own set of stress uh, that I need to deliver. But in terms of how he work, uh, how much focus he put in, you know, I have no complaints. A very disciplined individual completed his e-learning way before uh, you know uh, he attended the IDC, and when he came, he was al already having you know all the knowledge that is required. Everything was on point. Well, so during his IDC, there were six of us. I mean, six candidates. This team here, the dynamic is different. Back then, they were like having war in the IDC, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and here, like, I, I, I need to be like NATO kind of thing, you know. <laughs> hey, 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 you know, stop it, this kind of stuff. So yeah. I, it was a lot of fun. But back to seriousness, uh, I have no complaints towards Eden. He showed his, that he's responsible. He put in a lot of hard work and he, was, he had got really strong determination. Not so much playing, so it was different. And with this group here, it was the opposite, you know. This <laughs> this team, <laughs> this team here, these three guys was just I wouldn't not say playful, 
but everybody was really cheerful. And that helps, I think, in making things more interesting, making things light, as they were saying, the course was light, but it was actually not, but because they were behaving as such, so that, I think, made it light. Hang is very strong in his theory and also in his um, water skills performance. The only thing that uh, was a, a little bit a little bit challenging for me was uh, with his public speaking. So, despite being a dive master for a while, giving a lot of dive briefing out on a boat, meeting a lot of people, when he comes to delivering teaching presentations, maybe I can use the word struggle a little bit. From struggling, and now he has the confidence. He knows the flow. He knows what to say. So that that brings a lot of joy in me. You know, I could only for that particular skill, I could see how much he developed and how much uh, that made me happy. So I, I saw that. When it comes to Brendan, and he 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 is he's a strong person. He knows what he's doing, and at a lot of times, he's trying to take over my responsibility. So he wants to become <laughs> he, he he wants to become the course director. You know, so you know what's so funny. You know, when Dickie forgets something or when something slips in mind, he goes, Brennan, so the answer? <laughs> and I'll be like, what do you mean? I'm prepared, you know, caught me off, guys. Not just once. So, like, so, so yeah, Brennan is a little bit playful, but it's not bad. It's good. But when it comes to serious, he's, he's serious. In terms of putting effort, all of them really put a lot of effort. I, I don't have any complaints whatsoever. You know, it's just that at times, he's a little bit playful, but it's not too much. And I appreciate that actually because that helps to make the cause a little bit more lively. As you all know already, our friend here, Lucian. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> wow. Of the three, of the three, he's the one that really tests my patience. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's very... It's, it's, Today it can be it, it, it can it can be very easy. The next day it can be what's wrong with you? you know? <laughs> and then the next day to come, I I could not make out what what what's why and how he behave how he behave. I mean nothing bad really. It's just that sometimes when uh, we are doing stuff, I think he he thinks a little bit too much. I'm not too yeah. sure what he is thinking because he's. Uh, when we have breaks, right? He's always looking at something that he should not be looking at, and I think, <laughs> and I think that is why, uh, when we are doing stuff, sometimes he just walk, uh, he just look through me, you know. I can see, and then I was like, eh, eh, "Are you here? Are you here?" And then during classroom, if he's looking at me, and uh, I just, I just don't see if his eyes is. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. I want, I want to be sure if he's in the class, you know. Uh, but yeah, no. Other than that, he's also quite sharp. Should I say this or should I not say this? Yeah, we, call him, can, can, we, can. we call him Mr. ChatGPT because because yeah. <laughs> he, you know, he finds ways to make things easier for him. And on, um, well, I guess it. I make it easier for everyone, really. Yeah. But he, he, okay. he wants to make it a little bit even easier, even Simplified more con things. convenient for him. So he finds ways. So he goes to ChatGPT. So I just hope that his presentations are not ChatGPT's presentations. No, 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 no. I swear, I swear it's not. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we know, right? Yes, his little notebook, you know, everything's in French. Yes. <laughs> so for him as well, because of the language, it's not that he has poor English command. No, he has got strong English command. But yeah, sometimes to make sense, some, sometimes to, to, um, to understand things better, you need to read your own uh, mother yeah. tongue, right? To, exactly. You know. But uh, no, everybody really did well. Put in focus, put in the hard work, discipline. What more can you ask from your candidate, right? And we had fun. So we had fun. We eat together. We sleep together. <laughs> some, some of, of you, yes. Some, some of, of us. You. It was wait, wait, a really just fun a note, time. right? I sleep above, you sleep below. Okay, not together, <laughs> together. <laughs> not together, together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Next topic. Next, next topic, podcast. Yes. Come back for the next podcast and you'll find out. <laughs> Nikki, I have a question uh, in regards to language when mm. it comes to IDC. Mm. So as you can see, all these three candidates have different mother tongues. Yeah. Lucian being French, uh, Brandon English, and hang probably more towards the Chinese side. Mm. And all of them are actually doing IDC in English. English, yes. So how does that work when it comes to when they are certified instructors? 
are they only allowed to teach in English or are they allowed to teach in all types of language okay, that they so, are master in? So let me first maybe say something about the course itself. There are a lot of learning materials being made ready out there for people from all walks of life, people from other nations. You know, so people who have limited ability, should I say limited ability in understanding the theory, they can still understand right up to the really you know, sharp and strong and smart candidate. It is easy to understand these uh, theories, this manual, this learning aid. And uh, you have a lot of choice of language from French. Even for Mandarin, we have two choices. We have got the traditional and the simplified. Obviously, we have English, Dutch, German, a lot. And uh, I think recently... If not late last year, we have a full set of uh, learning material ready for Bahasa Malayu. So for me, it's a little bit of a challenge. I get a lot of candidates from all over the world, right? So we have from Singapore, Malaysian, French, British, Scottish, Germans. So yeah, a lot. Italians, Chinese as well, local Chinese, um, Chinese from mainland as well. It can be a little bit difficult for me when um, English is not their first language. But well, I'm considering to get, <laughs> I'm considering to get this uh, translation app so that I'm I'm not too sure if that would help, but that is something that I want to play with in my next IDC, um, you know, to facilitate uh, uh, with the students to answer your questions. Upon, I mean, after being an instructor, uh, they can teach in their own mother language, in their own language, and they are, uh, if not all, most of the learning materials are made in. All, all of the language that is being widely spoken uh, worldwide. Yeah. So there's no language restriction no. when it comes to uh, teaching. So as long as you are a certified instructor, you can teach, uh, as long as you can communicate well with your students mm. and teach them. Dickie, do you have any message for your IDC candidates before they go for their instructor examiner? Before they go for the IE? Okay, the yes. message for me... To them, to this group of coming up and coming instructor, just remember what have been taught to you guys. Take it easy, follow standards, you should be good. After becoming an instructor, just remember good judgmental, good role model, not the drill sergeant though, yeah? No cowboy diving. Show no empathy diving. and give. Yeah, no, cow- no cowboy no diving. No cowboy diving. No cowboy diving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I actually yeah, forgot about that. Yeah. So, so have passion and have empathy towards your uh, students. Those are my message. Yeah. And Aiden, as a moral supporter, a cheerleader for yes, all three of them. <laughs> what's your message to them? He came, so, he came all the way just to cheer us on. By the way. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he came all the way just to cheer us on. Yeah, and we're very appreciative of that. It really shows the the level of our friendship yeah. that we have here and the bonds that we have with each other. Exactly. And that be mindful that is also a good role model as an instructor, as a mentor, you know, in, in diving. This is what is uh, is all about as well. Huh? Aiden, go ahead. Oh yeah, so um word of advice for them, um as someone that has come all the way from Singapore just to see them how and get them through the IE as well is just don't put so much stress on himself a little bit of stress is good and you know read the questions properly do the presentations well they are one of the best candidates that I've seen so far so like I have no problems with them going for the IE all they need to do is just be themselves and they're able to for sure ace this IE and come back strong for B&J yeah? yes <laughs> all the very best guys thank you, thank you. Thank you. And for you guys, what is your message for those who are keen coming to be instructor? Come and enjoy. Find yourself. Find out yourself. Find, find out yourself. Yeah. As I said just now, uh, just be prepared. Always be prepared. Not only the mentor, because you're going to go through a lot of the exercise as well. Fitness, also you need to be prepared. You will, you, will, you will change. You will change after you go through the IDC. Oh. Definitely you will change. A new... Aiden, I think last year, right? Yeah. yeah. And then this time when I met him just a few days ago, he really gave me a very, very big different, I mean, the impression. So this boy. Boy, now man. Now man. Boy. We always boy. Okay. We are we'll be. <laughs> men, 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 are, men are always boys. Yeah. yeah. We always boy. Yeah. He really grew up 
yeah, and then he gave me the impression is he is now look as more confident on everything. I think I found this chance once he become he, an instructor. Yeah, you want to change myself? Change yourself? Come to IDC. Donc euh, les gars, si vous hésitez encore à venir à, à BNG pour passer votre euh, votre IDC, euh, arrêtez d'hésiter. Il fait beau, il y a du soleil, les les gens sont très beaux. Euh, demandez Diki pour euh, passer l'IDC et euh, ouais, euh, sauter dans le bateau. So what I was basically saying, uh, it's uh, if they still hesitate to come to BNG and go for the IDC, they shouldn't and they should ask for Diki go in the boat. So oh, hey, don't miss the boat, eh? If you really want to challenge yourself, you know, lifelong learning and you really, if you think that you have what it takes, then come. You know, mm. you got to experience it for yourself. But like what Hing said, definitely you'll change. Yeah, even, you know, not, not say a physical change, like you'll drop 10 pounds. I'm not saying that you're going to lose a lot of weight or whatever, but your perception on being a dive pro and the way you think that will change, change. for sure. Okay. Yeah. We're ever learning. So if you're keen or you want to challenge yourself you want to set new heights and come for idc mm. yeah you will learn a lot you will take back a lot everyone can be an instructor right so no. not okay <laughs> not okay, 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 okay let me rephrase not everyone can be an instructor well, if but you want if enough, you want it enough you're able to yeah. do it for sure if you put in the effort you know you take the time to to, to study to practice come to the idc take and have the the, the confidence in yourself to be an instructor Then by all means you can come and do it. Anyone can. As Dicky as an intro, as a course director now, you know, getting his own classes, <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. Please, by all means, come. He's a he's a wonderful course director. He teaches well. His classes are always fun with the stories that he tells. You know. <laughs> <laughs> really, Mr. really. Carlos, he he doesn't come feel. And see Mr. Yes, come and see Mr. Carlos. It doesn't feel like a. A university lecture or anything like that. It's really, really fun. Yeah, where you want to go, and he know all the step, and he know all the tricks and how to get you there. It's just like my papa, you know. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. And you know, he he pushes us. You know, like he knows that you know me and Luke, we are we are quite sharp, so we pick things up quite quick. But the moment we pick it up and get comfortable, right? Once we get comfortable with it, that's when he. Yeah, on the next level now. I'm gonna push you to do something more. Mm. You're gonna learn something extra. Mm. You know, so so that he always challenging us to be better. Mm. That's mark of a great CD. Always push yourself to be better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very curious. How does he get the name Mr. Cardo? <laughs> oh. Can we say it? Why not? <laughs> I'm asking. No, just kidding. Just kidding. No, it's only because I, you I, have a T-shirt. No, I think I think no. I think this. Story. This this story is for Dicky to share. Well, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's actually a nickname that was given to me by my uh, cousins. So my father has seven siblings all together, and my mom has got three. And when it comes to Hari Raya, is when we come and get together, right? And I'm always there. I'm a mama's boy, a mama's boy. So wherever I go. I'm always with my mother. I will always be holding on to her and that kind of stuff. And when I go to sleep, I need to I need to be cuddled in. That's why the cousins always call say, "Ah, Mr. Cuddles, Mr. Cuddles." So trying to tease me, but the name got stuck to me. And uh, <laughs> in fact, in my teens, <laughs> but I was something. Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, okay, let you go first. So, did you cuddle him? So I just want to reiterate <laughs> that Tiki no longer needs cuddles to go to sleep. Okay, he what he actually needs is he he needs the instructor manual below his below day <laughs> thing about <laughs> what's you. what he's gonna do tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. What he's gonna instill in us? Interesting, because yeah. I thought you got the name because you like to cuddle people, but it's actually the other way around. The other way around, yeah, yeah. So whenever you guys see Dicky, right, give him a hug. Whenever you see him on the street. <laughs> You didn't recognize him, just give him a hug. Ah, Mr. Cuddles, huh? Yeah, yeah, but don't be a creep. Say hi first, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Then come from the back and, you know. Yeah, yeah, say hi first. Introduce yourself first yeah. before you start cuddling him. Thank you so much, guys, for coming into this podcast Welcome. and sharing your experience, your IDC experience uh, with the course director, Diki. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the effort. Do your best tomorrow. I know you got this. And um, come 14, we're going to celebrate the, the, the three new instructors. <laughs> yes. All right? 
That is all from me to the guests, to the listeners out there. Please keep giving us your support, and uh, we would like to also get questions from you or ideas on what do we talk about on our next podcast. If you guys have any questions in regarding to become an instructor, feel free to contact us. Uh, Dicky will be happy to answer all your questions uh, anytime, anywhere. Mm, mm, mm. Right, guys. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you guys uh, in our next episode. Yeah. Yeah. See get you. in there, the boys. Oh, oh, the boys. Oh, 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 Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. you. All right. Uh,